Yeah, uh-huh, you know what it is. Soka Toa, Soka Toa, Soka Toa, Soka Toa. Yeah, uh-huh, you know what it is. Soka Toa, Soka Toa, Soka Toa, Soka Toa. Yeah, uh-huh, you know what it is. When I'm doing math, I do it big. Yeah, uh-huh, screaming, that's nothing. When I'm doing math, that's something. All right, we're in the last part of trigonometry, part three. We're going to work on word problems today, which deal with learning about new vocabulary words of angle of elevation and angle of depression. So the first part of your notes page, remember that I gave you a sheet so you can follow along with the notes so you don't have to draw the pictures out. So think about what does elevation mean. Elevation means usually the height. So think about, look at the first picture, and let's picture that there's this guy um, down here. He's our stick figure. And if he's normally just looking straight ahead, here is his vision right here. So he's looking straight ahead. But then all of a sudden, an airplane happens to fly by. So then the angle that it takes his eyes from looking straight ahead to then looking straight up at the airplane, this is called the angle of elevation, which I will abbreviate as AOE, angle of elevation. So this degree, how many degrees it took from his eyes looking straight forward to looking straight up is calling the angle of elevation. Now I'll picture it the other way and think that you were in the airplane yourself. So if you're in the airplane, your vision is looking straight ahead. So here's your vision in the orange. And if you wanted to look at dude down below, you would have to drop your eyesight down right about here. And then you would end up having the angle of depression. So do you notice anything exciting about this? Hopefully you're seeing that, hey, there are parallel lines up in this right here. We got parallel lines. So the vision of you and the vision of the person on the airplane is parallel, which makes the angle of depression and the angle of elevation equal. So that's the question to the first fill in the blank that you can put in there. That the angle of depression and the angle of elevation is exactly the same because it's alternate interior angles. A always bringing it back. So let's take a look and try to name them. Okay, so I'm going to skip the second example and we're going to go down to the next portion, which are the examples. So here we have um, a dude, a stick figure, who is flying a kite. So if he's looking straight ahead to start with, his line of vision is HK. Then he looks up at the kite and now it's HJ. So how would I name your angle of elevation in order for you to look up at the kite? Your angle of elevation using three letters would be angle KHJ. KHJ. So that's how many degrees it takes you to look up at the kite. Now let's say that there was someone on the kite, you know, flying on the kite. That's normal, right? So let's say there was someone on the kite. Their vision of looking straight ahead would be JI. And then to look downward at you would be JH. So that angle of depression would be angle IJH. Okay, take a couple seconds if you need to and try the second one by yourself. Name the angle of elevation and the angle of depression. All right, the angle of elevation is the dude looking straight ahead to the airplane. So angle of elevation would be GEF. And then the angle of depression would be someone looking straight ahead from the airplane down at the guy in the boat. So angle of depression would be HFE. Okay, so now that we got that down, let's start to look at how we're going to do these word problems. So there's a couple steps. I'm just going to have you fill in the blank as I read them along. I'm not going to write out the whole step. I'm just going to write down what you need to put in the blank. So the first step is that you are always going to use a right triangle to solve. I mean, that's why we're in the right triangle unit. Trigonometry is with right triangles. So always use a right triangle, so draw one. So you always start with a right triangle, and I'll show you what to do. It also helps to draw animations, a.k.a. pictures. It's kind of fun that way. The second step. Plug in the information from the word problem to the triangle. Okay, there will be one missing piece. So name the missing piece or what you're looking for as your X. So 
plug the information into the triangle and there will be a missing piece so make sure you have an X in your picture. Step 3. Circle your angle of reference and determine which trig function that you will use. So we've already done this step. I mean you've already practiced that to death. So now we're able to do that and the last step would be then to solve for X. And that's it. Alright, so we're going to do two word problems around the back of your page. And let's look at the first example. I'll read it to you while I'm drawing. So, problem number one says Keith is standing 40 feet away from a 200 foot house. So, as I said before, you're always going to use a right triangle. So, it doesn't matter how you draw it. I'm just going to draw it like this to start. So, here's a right triangle. Where would Keith be at? Keith is going to be at the bottom and he's standing away from a house. So, most likely, this right here is probably going to be your house. So I'm going to draw a house. Got a little door. We got some windows. We got us a roof. Okay, and let's put Keith on there. Um, here we go. Here's Keith coming. And Keith is right down here at the bottom. So Keith um, is standing 40 feet away from a 200-foot house. So which one of these would represent the 40 feet away? The bottom here, he's that far away, that's the distance, that's going to be 20. And then it says that the house is 20 feet tall. So that's going to be, I'm sorry, 400 feet tall. 200 feet tall, I'm um, back this truck up. This is 40 and this is 200. Okay, so they want to know, or it says that he spots a rabid squirrel on top of the roof. Uh-oh, a rabid squirrel. I don't know if you've ever seen one of those, but it's not pleasant. So here is your rabid squirrel on top of the roof. And he's injured and in need of some assistance. So what would be the angle of elevation Keith uses to spy the squirrel? So here is Keith's vision. Keith's vision is right on the bottom here. So he's looking straight ahead. And so he, we need to find out what's the angle of elevation to see the rabid squirrel. Hopefully you're thinking to yourself, I need to put the X right there because that is the angle of elevation. So now all I need to do is figure out what trig function I need to use and solve for X. So 40 would represent your adjacent and 200 would represent your opposite. So which function would we use? Hopefully you're thinking that we're going to use the tangent of X equals 200 over 40. And remember, to find the missing angle, you have to do the tan inverse, or the tan to the negative 1, of 200 over 40. So again, if you do this in your calculator, you'll find that this is going to be 78.69. So that's how many degrees that you had to look up in order to see the rabid squirrel. At the same time, if the rabid squirrel were looking straight ahead, he would also have to look 78.69 degrees down, in order to see you. They're the same. Okay, let's take a look at the last one. This one's my favorite one. So, Miss Sawinski is flying in an airplane to an unknown destination. So, let's um, go ahead and draw our right triangle. I'm going to just draw it the other way around so you can see it doesn't matter which way you draw your right triangle. It's all about if you have the right information. So, we're going to go ahead and draw this airplane or put this airplane on here. So, here's me in an airplane and um, I'm super sad because I have to leave baby Jordy um, for the weekend. As I am in the air, I look down at baby Jordy and I shed a tear. So here's baby Jordy. Just in case you forgot what she looks like, here she is. So I look down at baby Jordy and I make an angle of depression of 48 degrees. So remember, here am I. I'm right here. I'm looking straight ahead. I have to look downward to baby Jordy at an angle of depression of 48 degrees. And then the plane is 4,000 feet above the ground. So hopefully you recognize that this is going to be 4,000 because this is our height right here. So they want to know how far away is baby Jordy from her mommy. So the distance between me and baby Jordy would be right here as X. So how am I going to figure this out? Hopefully you're saying to yourself that this 48 is the same as this 48. So we can just copy this 48 down here because the angle of elevation and angle of depression are exactly the same. Now we can figure this out a little bit easier. So now if I look at the 4,000, the 4,000 represents the opposite. 
and the x represents the hypotenuse. So I'm going to use the cosine, so katoa. So, so the sine of x equals opposite over hypotenuse. The sine of 48 degrees equals opposite 4,000 divided by hypotenuse of x. So now you can go in your calculator and actually find the sine of 48, and you should get 0 0.7431 equals 4,000 over x. Now because x is on the bottom, we're going to cross multiply. It'll make our life easier. So we get 0 0.7431x equals 4,000. Divide 4,000 by 0 0.7431 and we get x equals 5,382.5. So that is how far away I am from poor baby Jordy.